There are five nutrient deficiencies behind every single kidney disease case. And today, we are going to unmask and beat them. Because there is no way you are going to improve if you have one of these. But nutrient deficiencies are not taken as serious as they should by today's medical practice. And that's a fact. Too many nephrologists are not testing for vitamin deficiencies at all. Now, here is a surprising piece of trivia for you. Did you know that nearly 80% of individuals battling kidney disease are also wrestling with at least one form of vitamin deficiency? It's as if their bodies are throwing a lack of vitamin party and everybody's invited. And yet, this pervasive issue is not met with a vigor and diligence it so desperately requires. To lighten the mood a bit, I could tell you a joke about the nutrient deficiency, but I'm afraid there wouldn't be irony in it. <laughs> Jokes aside, this is a serious problem. Numerous nutrient deficiencies, even those that don't wave a red flag with symptoms, have been linked to a faster progression of chronic kidney disease. The five deficiencies that we are going to see today are those that can cause the most significant damage every day. We need to stop them if we want to protect our kidneys. Time to shine a spotlight on each of these deficiencies. Today, for each deficiency, we are going to see who is more at risk, how to identify the deficiency, and what to eat to improve it. Yes, our diets can be our knight in shining armor against these hidden foes. So gear up and get ready because we are about to embark on a journey to redefine kidney health. Number one. Let's start with a seriously underrated yet dangerous deficiency. Roughly one in four individuals with kidney disease experience this deficiency which can directly lead to hypertension and kidney damage. I'm talking about potassium deficiency. Okay, now you may ask, aren't people with kidney problems supposed to have too high potassium levels? Well, the truth is that a deficiency in potassium is just as common as having too high levels for those with kidney issues. We are talking about 12 to 18% of CKD sufferers here. And frankly, this is a huge risk because most CKD sufferers are still being instructed today to always limit their potassium consumption, often without any reason. Yes, yeah, some days it feels like I'm still stuck in the 90s before science made huge breakthroughs in the way this condition is managed. But we don't need to be. You know, having too low potassium levels is linked to kidney damage and a faster progression of kidney disease. Low potassium levels can worsen high blood pressure and decrease the effectiveness of antihypertensive medications. Low potassium levels are also linked to increased urine calcium excretion, which can also cause kidney stone or direct damage to the glomeruli inside the kidneys. So make sure that if you are limiting your potassium intake, you know very well what you are doing and why. As I was saying, we know today that having too low levels of potassium is just as common in CAD as having too high levels. Question, who is more at risk for low potassium levels? First of all, those with diabetes. Some diabetes complications, especially metabolic acidosis, can mess up potassium levels. Taking insulin can also affect potassium levels, and also those taking diuretics. Diuretics, which help the body get rid of excess fluid, can also cause the body to excrete too much potassium. But obviously, even more at risk are those limiting their potassium intake without actually having too high potassium levels. Question. What you can eat to raise potassium levels? Guys, I don't recommend changing the way you eat without consulting your nephrologist. This is important. But in any case, you have actually been found to have too low potassium levels. And if you are 100% sure of what you're doing, you may add to your diet exactly those foods most 
people with CAD are told to limit. Some of the healthiest include spinach, broccoli, beet, greens, avocado, potatoes. Up next, the most common and dangerous vitamin deficiency. Number two, vitamin D. Now, vitamin D deficiency is a way more serious issue than people imagine, especially because, as I was saying, way too many people are not being tested and consequently not receiving appropriate supplementation for this very common deficiency. But vitamin D is way more important for kidney health than we ever imagined, says science. A deficiency in vitamin D is directly linked to proteinuria, a predictor of declining kidney function. What's scary is that about 80% of those with kidney problems have dangerously low levels of this vitamin. Yes, 80% of kidney patients may be able to improve their GFR just by making sure they are getting enough vitamin D. So make sure your levels are in order. Question: Who is more at risk for this deficiency? Anyone with kidney issues, especially those in the advanced stages, is at risk. Vitamin D is changed by the kidneys into its active form. This process is less efficient when kidney function declines and this causes a long list of problems including kidney and heart damage. And guys, while I recommend everyone to keep their level for all the nutrients of today's video, under control, make sure you are being tested at least for vitamin D deficiency. Also, there are some groups of people even more at risk. This includes people older than 65, people with a darker complexion, people living in areas with limited sunlight exposure. Now, even more at risk are those taking specific medications. This includes many antihypertensive medications such as ACE eyes and calcium channel blockers statins and other medicines for cholesterol, metformin for diabetes, antidepressants and anti-seizure medicines are also linked to low vitamin D levels. Guys, if you are in any one of these groups, make sure you are taking action and supplementing vitamin D already. What foods are the best sources of this vitamin? Well, mushrooms, especially sun-dried shiitake mushrooms, but don't rely too much on foods when it comes to vitamin D. Okay, while vitamin D is not something new for most of you guys, I want to make sure that everyone with CKD is informed about the risk. Our next entry is a deficiency that's just as dangerous as vitamin D deficiency, but way sneakier than it is. This is another deficiency that can cause your blood pressure to skyrocket and serious kidney damage. I'm talking about magnesium deficiency. Magnesium is an extremely important nutrient. It's involved in more than 300 enzymatic reactions, including metabolizing vitamin D, that keep your body and kidneys functioning properly. Recently, magnesium made the headlines because low levels of this mineral were linked to a faster decline in kidney function and earlier end-stage renal failure. Research also linked increasing magnesium intake to reduce water retention. And magnesium deficiency is so common that if you are having frequently muscle cramps or troubles focusing and sleeping, magnesium deficiency should be investigated as a cause. Question: Who is more at risk for this deficiency? People who are more likely to have a magnesium deficiency include those who eat a diet low in magnesium, which can be a diet low in vegetables, and also those who have conditions that affect how well their body absorbs magnesium. This includes people with chronic kidney disease in general, but especially those who also lack vitamin D. Diabetics, especially those taking insulin. People taking proton pump inhibitors, but also diuretics, are also at risk. So, if you are in any of these categories, make sure you don't have too low magnesium levels. Question, what can you eat to get more magnesium? Making sure you are getting enough magnesium from your diet is a great way of protecting the kidneys. Many magnesium-rich foods are extremely healthy. Whole grains, for example, like brown rice and whole wheat bread are good sources of magnesium and are generally low in protein, making them ideal. They are also a great low glycemic index, carb source, rich in fiber and many vitamins. 
Also consider vegetables like cabbage, zucchini, cucumber, radishes and lettuce. Now when talking about magnesium, it's impossible not to mention nuts. Brazil nuts, cashew, almonds and peanuts are some of the best sources of magnesium out there, but they are also rich in calories phosphorus and even some protein, so moderation is key when adding nuts to our diets. Up next, a deficiency that you can't solve with veggies and that's also linked to fatigue. Make sure you are supplementing for Number 4. Vitamin B12 Vitamin B12, also known as cobalamin, is a water-soluble vitamin. This vitamin deficiency is very common. According to statistics, up to 1 in 3 people with kidney disease has this deficiency. And this is very concerning. This vitamin is essential for blood formation as well as brain and nerve function. Essential means that your body needs it and it cannot produce it by itself. If your vitamin B12 levels are deficient, it significantly increases the risk of developing anemia, a condition that can cause severe damage to your kidneys. Anemia reduces oxygen delivery to the kidneys, impairing their function and triggering a vicious cycle of kidney damage and anemia. Luckily, correcting this common deficiency can make you feel more energized and can greatly help your kidneys. Question: Who should be more concerned with this deficiency? Anyone following a plant-based diet and not taking B12 supplements should be concerned with this deficiency. No plant-based food contains B12 which also means you are going to need to supplement it. Additionally, people with gastrointestinal issues may be at risk for malabsorption, meaning that a regular multivitamin won't be enough. This may also be true for those taking proton pump inhibitors or metformin. So ask your primary care physician to test you for B12 deficiency if you are in any of these categories. Anemia is a serious danger that should never be underestimated. And guys, if you want to know more about how to supplement for the most common vitamin deficiencies, my video up here and also down in the description is for you. Next, another common deficiency that can put your kidneys in danger due to anemia. Number 5. Iron deficiency. Iron deficiency is common in people with chronic kidney disease, especially those on dialysis or those with heavy proteinuria, and it's obviously very dangerous. Iron is needed for the production of hemoglobin which carries oxygen in the blood. When the kidneys are damaged, they may not produce enough erythropoietin which stimulates the production of red blood cells. This can lead to anemia, a condition that can seriously decrease your chances of an improvement in GFR numbers. Question: Who is more at risk for iron deficiency? Well, basically anyone with kidney disease. The higher the stage, the greater the risk, and this includes a lot of people. According to recent statistics, up to 72.8% of those with kidney disease also have anemia, and that's a staggering amount of people. According to studies, only 4% of people with this problem are receiving the appropriate attention. Even worse, most people with iron deficiency anemia are not even having their iron levels checked. Now guys, adding more iron-rich foods may help, but anemia is a much bigger issue that cannot be solved with just some iron. What to do then? Get informed about it. This is the most important step to solve one of the most dangerous complications of CKD. In my video up here, I've shown you exactly what to do if you think you may have anemia, a condition present in the vast majority of people with CKD. Watch it now to know more. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.